All right, we are back with part four in our Q&A from Instagram, and we're just gonna answer more of your questions today. So the first question we got was, starting inside versus direct seating. I'm never successful with starting inside. So the person, I think, is basically asking, should I start inside, should I direct seed, which is best? Please tell me I can direct seed, because I, don't, I can't do it inside. And I would say, most flowers can be direct seeded. I mean, there's, that's how gardeners have done it for many years. We start seeds inside because we want flowers earlier. We also want to be able to control the spacing. There's several reasons why we do it um, with that method. And we've written a blog post about this, so I will leave the link to that in the description. We've also created a course on this. So if you're struggling with starting seeds inside, go ahead and check out our How to Grow Cut Flowers course. We'll leave the link to that below as well. It's pretty much a beginner level course on how to do this to grow cut flowers on a small scale without a greenhouse or anything like that. If you want to grow seeds inside, there's a couple things. You've probably been trying it on windowsills, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. or maybe you have lights, I don't know. Window sills can work for a few things if you start them like one to two weeks before mm -hmm. the last frost and you can take them outside soon. I think the right kind of grow light is the best way to have good success mm -hmm. inside, not starting them too soon, which mm -hmm. is something we cover in the course and in the blog post. Just, you have to know your plant, know when to start them, because that can be the biggest thing, you know? Right. You get leggy plants and they're not gonna do good. Right. Or you start them too late and they're really tiny and not ready to go out when they need to. Right, but there's also other ways to do it. Um, right. We grow with a low tunnel here. We grow a ranunculus in that, or we did. I guess we have new gardens now. <laughs> but one year we decided to actually just direct seed in about January, right? Mm -hmm. We direct seeded a bunch of spring flowers, which is typically what you wanna start earlier. And they did really well in there. I think we had to water them a few times Times, right. Make sure they had moisture, but right. what, what a, a dome or a hoop does is it keeps the moisture in there and they got they stayed warm enough. Did we right. have a frost blanket over yeah. it too? Mm -hmm. Okay. We always do two layers in our tunnels. So if you want to grow a large portion of, you know, like early right. spring flowers, that would be a way to do it outside. Right. You know, put them in a under a hoop. It has to be stuff that doesn't freeze, like is, is a little bit cold, right. tart, tardy, right. tardy. <laughs> but you couldn't plant basil out there because that, no. would, that would get be toasted. But you could also try um, winter sewing mm -hmm. in a milk jug. In a milk I'm, jug. I'm trying that with a few things this year. Right. A cold frame might be a good idea to try too. But that has to be something that's a little cold hardy as well. Right. Most of the stuff you're going to be starting early outside needs to be able to take a little bit of cool. Right. Um, back to the winter sewing in a milk jug. If you don't know what that is, you take a, an old milk jug and you cut it in half, but you leave like an inch section for a hinge, and then you put soil in it. Drill um, holes in the bottom. Drill first. holes in the bottom for drainage. Um, put moist soil in At it. least two inches of soil. And then just direct seed your, put your seeds on top of that, tape it shut. Do you put a lid on it? Mm -hmm. You don't put a lid on you it. Cover the seeds and shut it. And shut it, and just set it on your porch. And it can snow on it and ice on it, uh -huh. and those little babies just stay alive. Somehow. As long as they have enough moisture. Like you yeah. wanna pick them up every once in a while and see if they're light. Yeah. Then you can just, if you wanna water them, the easiest way is just to set them, because they've got holes in the bottom, set them in a thing of water, and they'll yeah. just sink as they get um, as, hydrated. As they're <laughs> hydrated, right, that's a good point. And they'll, they'll grow very slowly because they don't right. have a lot of warmth and light, but it's it's perfect because it's it's a no-fuss method mm -hmm. for starting seeds a little There's, bit earlier. A lot of people will grow their tomatoes in that and yeah. zinnias and things that can't take cold, you know. You could start them a couple, you could, probably two months before the last frost. I don't know. I did onions two years ago in that mm -hmm. and it was a crazy year. So till we actually got them planted in the ground, the onions were yellow and, and whatever. But it worked pretty good. I mean, yeah. all, all things considered, we got a decent crop of onions out of it. The thing to remember then with that is that you do need to bump them up, or when you're planting them, you'll have these, you won't have neat little plugs. Right, right. So you're planting bare roots because right. you're kind of uprooting yeah. them into your garden. So you're really gonna have to water them, like yeah. really well before when they- When you plant them. Yeah, and you'll wanna harden them off a little first. Right. So another question we got was, how do you choose a layout or design for your garden? and we're right in the middle of, of making a video about that. It talks about where we get inspiration for our gardens. There's a lot of things that go into how you design your garden. Um, I think one of the things would be where your wind comes from, right? how your sun plays with the garden, sun and shade, mm -hmm. um, what the purpose for your garden is. Well, there's lots of things that go into it, so just stay tuned for that video. We just do what we like, in short. <laughs> and we've kind of sacrificed some efficiency to right. have kind of a, a rambling cottage garden mm -hmm. for part of it, but we like that. We have so much wind here, and I think the whole rambling design helps with that because we've got some 
some shrubs right. here and there. You can't just get in, the, get in the path and right. go for it. Whip. It kind of gets broken up by the yeah by the structure of the garden. The next person said, please recommend three flowering plants you can direct seed for beginners. <laughs> and we, we're getting a lot of that. Like, what can I just put in my garden and not have to baby in the house? <laughs> Just about everything. I would say a lot of things can be direct sown. Right. Um, with varying degrees of success. Right. But just try it. You, you know? won't have flowers as early, which is why we start them sooner. Mm -hmm. And you may not have cohesive bouquets because we always aim to have certain flowers blooming with others. Mm -hmm. But if you're okay with that, just plant it right in the garden. You'll have some spots that won't have flowers, but it's okay. You yeah. Know? If you're looking to save time and work on the front end, you're probably okay with a few empty spots. Yeah. You can always sew in something later. Like sew a little heavy, you can always thin out. Right. If you want that neat pattern of offset plants, you can always make tiny little holes. I've done this when I've direct sewed early spring things. Mm -hmm. And you just put several seeds in each hole. Yeah. And then if they need to be thinned out, fine. A lot of those early ones didn't, so I would just leave mm -hmm. them. Just make a little hole with your finger. <laughs> it doesn't take much. And then you want some real fine something to just sprinkle over it, you know? And help it germinate. Uh, but if you want three flowering plants, the three we would say would be zinnias, sunflowers, and cosmos. Cosmos. Those would be the easiest probably yeah. to just direct sow. I, I did that long before we had root design. I, I would have had those that I just direct sowed in my garden. Right. Some people say, don't grow zinnias, everybody's grown them, but it's an easy win. Right. And there are really pretty zinnias now. Right. So mm -hmm. some of our favorites are the queen lime series, mm -hmm. queen lime, queen red lime, mm -hmm. queen orange lime. If you want smaller ones, the Oklahoma series are really good. Yes, we love those. Um, we like the Benary's Giant. Right. They can actually look like a dahlia sometimes mm -hmm. right. with a lot less work. Yeah. And for sunflowers, I would say if you're a beginner, don't go for the pro cuts, which are just a single stalk and a single flower mm -hmm. per seed. Go for the branching varieties. Look, yeah, look um, specifically for branching. You can get really pretty dark colored ones, by colored. There's a strawberry lemonade yeah. colored one that I like. And Cosmos, those are, I like the white purity one. That's just a, a classic Cosmo. But then, um, Double click. The double clicks. Those are pretty. Mm, those are yummy. Okay, the next person commented and said, dimensions of beds, putting in stakes. And we had worded the question, what would you want to know if you were starting a flower farm? So, dimensions of beds, let's do that one first. That depends so much on, again, your purpose. Yeah. If you are going to be putting a low tunnel up, which is what we wanted to make sure all our beds could handle, you'll want it to have the size of what those low tunnels would be. Mm -hmm. And you can buy a three foot or a four foot wide mm -hmm. bender. Mm -hmm. We have a four foot, so most of our beds are four foot wide by however long we have, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's our bed dimensions. We stick right. with four foot just so that we can actually put a hoop on mm -hmm. each bed if we need it. In my new garden, I have some three foot beds, but those are gonna be like little perennial borders that are gonna sort of split up the garden and I'm never planning to put hoops over those. So right. in our old garden we did mostly four foot beds, mm -hmm. but then we had some that were 18 inch, like our dahlias were right. were they 18 inch. Those beds? are about 20 inch. 20 inch. because uh, we just had single rows of dahlias right. for better airflow and, right. and whatnot. We did um, have a couple of beds that we could put like snapdragons and something. We in, alternated stuff through. But those were only 20 inches because that's what the space was. You yeah. know, we had planted <laughs> stuff here and we had planted stuff there and we had a grass patch. And then we took that grass patch out and put a lot of um, narrow paths and narrow yeah. beds in there. <laughs> you can do both. Yeah. Um, I would say for sure, if you want to do some hoops, for sure do three or four foot, whatever your hoop size is, but then whatever floats your boat. And then for stakes, um, we use a lot of tea stakes. Yeah. For staking. We have a, a wood shop on the property, so we do some of um, Just for the like shorter wood. beds, we'll do like a fat wood stake. Mm -hmm. We've also used the low tunnel hoop. Those can be used as stakes. Yeah. You know, I've, I've uh, fastened my netting to those as well. And if you're curious about how to make a low tunnel, we created a video on that. We always make one every year for our ranunculus. Low cost, low stress, and we'll leave a link for that if you want to watch that. The next question we got was, when can I plant my ranunculus outside that I started inside? And this is my question too. <laughs> Well, if, you're, if you've got green leaves and the ranunculus is, is used to being inside, number one, you have to harden it off before you plant it mm -hmm. out. If it's at that stage, I would probably plant it out under cover. Mm -hmm. So do a little bit of hardening off, but then put a row cover over it at night. Yeah, like a frost blanket. I've never done that. So my guess would probably be that a couple weeks before the last frost, you could probably put it out. The thing with ranunculus, the best way we've found to grow it is to start it early. They want 90 days of cool, like 40, 50 degree temperatures. If they get really hot, they can go dormant. 
What we do is we pre-sprout them, put them directly in the ground before they've grown in the end of January. Yeah, under a cover, which this year I'm actually start trying something different because I don't have my garden at my house. So I'm gonna put them in a cold frame. But basically you want them in the ground and then they start growing. We're answering questions we don't know. Yeah, I know, let's take it with a grain of salt. We can tell you what we did, but I'm not sure. <laughs> We've never had plants that we planted out with good success. Yeah. Another question we got was anything you would find worth hiring help for or outsourcing when you're just starting out? Bookkeeping, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, help with garden tasks, depending on how much time you have and how big your garden is and how right. much capital you have. Right. One thing that we kind of outsourced was to buy in plugs. Right. Especially early growing stuff or perennials or stuff that's hard to start. Farmer Bailey Plugs, we'll leave a link to his website in the description. If you don't want to have grow lights and all that stuff, yeah. that would be one way to get some of those harder to grow annuals, but it does cost a little bit more. So what we usually get from him was foxglow, we got eucalyptus, we got delphinium, we um, got our ladies mantle. Scaviosa. Yeah. He's got he, tons of he stuff. He specializes in cut flower right, uh, plugs. And the final question today is, thinking of doing cut flowers in pots due to my age. Any advice? <laughs> and my note is no, we don't have any, we haven't done that. I would be a little hesitant to encourage that because most cut flowers you want some kind of length to them and growing tall stuff in pots means they could topple. Mm -hmm. Maybe a better alternative or something you could do if you still want to do them in pots is to put some kind of support around them. I would maybe suggest in a raised bed instead of growing in yeah. pots because they can, they'll dry out more quickly in pots probably. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to try it, go ahead. Let us know how it goes. Yeah, right. I'd love to see that. Okay, so we got a few more questions here that we haven't thought through. So, do you think roses are worth the investment? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Not so much as a cut flower because the David Austin roses we grow don't last real long in bouquet. But we love the this the fragrance and the beauty they just add to the garden. We grow them for ourselves, we say. The next one, if you were adding perennials, how you like to incorporate them into the landscape. I like an old fashioned border just filled with perennials. Maybe a drift of something and then a little bit later another drift of something and I like to put annuals in between. That's kind of how we did our long border. And Maybe we should show right. that. And sort of make them wave through the bed too. Yeah. You know, don't make them all in a straight row. Okay, this was the second part of that question. And how you create a landscape look in general. I think the main thing is if you've got your market rows or you've got your rows of flowers, Look at the edges. What can you do to pretty up the edges? And think about doing curves on the edges instead of just straight squared off. One of my favorite parts in the garden is where there's a border here and it goes in a little bit and goes around and it just has this pretty little curve, you know? <laughs> your eye wants to follow movement in a picture. So if you're looking at it when you're taking pictures or just looking at your garden, give your eye something to follow. So this concludes our Q&A for this time. Thank you all for participating in that. And if you have more questions, We'll probably do one in the future as well. Thank you.